Good evening, everyone, and a massive welcome to Armstrong House um, New Starters Assembly. So, um, well done. First of all, you've been the best house uh, in the school. Um, for those of you that don't know me, um, I'm Mrs Kilmister um, and I am head of Armstrong and also teach business and economics. I'm joined in Armstrong House um, by Mrs Knight, who's deputy head um, of Armstrong, and she's going to be delivering some of the presentation with me this evening. Both students and parents will get to know us very well over your time um, at Pershaw High. Mr Hanson is also with us this evening. He's been producer for us behind the scenes. I was going to pop you over to Mrs Knight just to introduce herself. Hello, as has already been said, my name's Amy Knight and I'm Deputy Head of Armstrong House. I'm also a geography teacher at the school. So we're going to go through some information this evening, um, a little bit of, a, of an assembly, but also answering some of the questions that you have sent in um, and that you want to know answers to. So we hope we kind of get through everything and give you all the information that you need to help you settle this evening. So Armstrong, we wear green coloured ties. Um, that is um, obviously different to students who are in Kingsley who wear purple and students in Magellan who wear gold. If you ever need to find us in school, we love to know uh, about all the amazing things that Armstrong students do. Um, but also if you've got any queries or any problems or anything you need help with, our office is located on the main corridor just between the dining room and the main hall. So you might wonder why we chose Armstrong to be the name of our house. This is why. So Neil Armstrong is who our house is named after. He had aspirations from a really young age to be a pilot. He set his mind to it and by the age of 15, he achieved that. He became a test pilot, flying experimental planes, which was a very dangerous job. He completed lots of harsh physical tests to become an astronaut, but he kept going. He was given command of Apollo 11, which was the first manned landing on the moon. And he was the first to leave that craft and actually walk on the moon. His footprints are still there. He showed during all this how he was passionate, determined, he was resourceful, he reflected on failed attempts that had been made, he was resilient, he was reasoned, and he took responsibility by leading the mission. In their words, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. It was the first time anyone had ever done that type of thing. So we thought that he had showed in his um, in his attempt to do that, and to, to be the first person on the moon, lots of amazing qualities, and that's why we named the house um, after him. We think he showed lots of qualities that we want young people to develop. So I just wanted very quickly to talk to you about some of our expectations to you as of you, sorry, as new students to Pershaw High School, so that you can develop the skills that you need to succeed, just like Neil Armstrong did. These will make your time with us the most fulfilling and the most enjoyable. And there's one word that will become apparent that if we do all these things right, that we will become. First of all, want it want to do your best want to be the best you can make sure your behavior is the best so that others around you are allowed to do their best as well get involved we've got many opportunities at school from sports clubs to drama to music to dance chess clubs as well as opportunities within tutor groups and the local community get involved in as much as you can while you're with us need to know we all need to know things, ask questions, listen to the information and instructions, but make sure you understand. And if you don't, ask us again. Use ePraise really well so that you know what's going on and when, and so that you know when homework's due. This ends really important for me. Be nice. It's really important to be nice to each other. Nice to your parents, nice to staff, nice to other adults. Treat them as you want to be treated. E for effort, we expect you to put an effort in the classroom, but also in tutor and at home, just to make an effort in all you do. R, there are five R's, so be resourceful, be reflective, be responsible, be resilient, and show reasoning, just like Neil Armstrong did. And S, finally, success breeds success. By doing all of the above, 
you will become the most successful you possibly can be during your time with us and which will enable us as a house to be winners of the house competition against all the other houses that we compete against and we'll allow Armstrong to be winners. I'm just going to hand you over to Mrs Knight who's going to talk about a few things about tutor and how they look during the week. Thank you. So what does a day in a tutor actually look like? Well, you get together two times a day. First thing in the morning where you'll register, you'll go through the daily notices and be given any room changes that may be occurring. So all the essentials that you need to be able to go through your day. You then come together after lunch, just before lesson five, and that is when you do a tutor activity. They vary each day and I'll be talking you through those in a moment. Now, the most important piece of information I think that you guys want to know is who is your tutor and what is your tutor group? Well, you find that out next Wednesday. You are going to be invited to um, a virtual meeting. As it says on there, there are three dates that this might occur. That, in that meeting, you will get to meet your tutor and you'll get to meet the other year seven students in your tutor group. Hopefully as well, we'll be able to get some current tutees there because it's lovely to be able to meet some people who you are going to be spending time with twice a day. And this is what the tutor week looks like. We have um, a list of things, a structure to the week, and it's different depending on which house you are in. So this is the Armstrong structure. On a Monday, we like to start the week um, celebrating achievements, being po as positive as we can, and you tell us what you've been up to and how you've succeeded over the last week. We also do an equipment check so that you are ready to learn throughout the rest of the week. On a Tuesday, you have a tutor activity and on a Wednesday, we gather as a house in the hall to um, listen to some new ideas. And finally, on Friday, we have a quiz, a fun and interactive activity that is very much led by your tutor and by your tutor group as a whole. What we're going to be doing now is answering some of the questions that people have um, emailed into us since the last meeting that you had. And Miss Kilmister is going to be taking the first question. So the first question that we had um, emailed into us was, will I be put in a tutor group with someone from my school? Um, we've got 45 tutor groups, so 15 in each house. And we tried to put someone from each school in every tutor group. So not everyone, no, will be in a tutor group with someone else from their school. But that doesn't matter. That's fine. We always help you with activities to settle and to meet new people and to make new friends. OK, the next question. What happens if I don't like the tutor group I've been put in? Well, we don't think that's going to happen. Um, most people come to the school and they quickly make new friends from both their current year group and older year groups, because obviously the vertical tutoring. And if push comes to shove, you are only in tutor for half an hour a day. So next one said, um, how do I know what to put in my bag for each day? Really good question. And I know that lots of people worry about having everything ready to come into school. So you're all super organised. You'll always need to have your pencil case um, and in your pencil case should be the equipment that is detailed on our equipment list. And there is on a Monday, as Mrs Knight just said, um, an equipment check just to help you make sure that you are ready for the whole week uh, and set up so you don't ever have um, things missing that you need. You might always need other things, a bus pass if you come in on the buses, a mobile phone if your parents want you to bring one to be able to be, you know, be able to contact you to and from school. OK, you must, however, adhere to our mobile phone policy and they must be switched off during school time. You might also need a house key. You might need PE kit. OK, what the, the key to that is that you should um, check your timetable on ePraise each night so that you are ready then and prepared for the next day. OK, always remember as well to check whether it's week one and week two because you will have different lessons each week. So ePraise app on your phone, parents can get it as well. Um, really, really useful way to look at your timetable, see um, that night what you've got the next day ready to prepare yourself. So we've been asked how early can I arrive? Because some of you obviously get dropped off on the way when your parents or carers are heading to work. Well, you can arrive from 7.45 onwards. If you do arrive that early, we do ask you to go direct to the dining room. 
and you stay there until about 8.30 because the majority of students arrive from about 8.30 onwards and then obviously you can move to wherever you have agreed to meet up with your friends. OK, next one said, where do I wait before I can go to my tutor room? Um, there's lots of areas you can wait around school. Um, you can't wait in any classroom because obviously there's no staff in there to supervise until the first bell goes. Most students wait in the dining room or outside in one of the covered areas or in the areas outside the library, waiting for friends to arrive off buses and other transport. You'll be told of all the areas that you are allowed in when you join us in September. OK, so does everyone use the main entrance in the morning to get to your tutor room? Well, there's lots of site. Uh, there's lots of entrances to the site and you can use any entrance to the site before 8.50 a.m. And so it's possible that you won't go through the main entrance if you arrive before then. Um, once you have arrived, there's a warning bell and that is your cue to move to your tutor room by the shortest available route. Now, this may include the main entrance or it may not. For example, if you're in the humanities block, you won't use the main entrance to go to your tutor room. However, if you arrive after 8.50 in the morning, the gates will be locked and therefore you must go through main reception to be able to access the school site. OK, um, one of the, the really pleasing ones that we've had in is about um, will there be any clubs available in September? And I'm really pleased that someone wants to know about clubs and activities because we really want everybody to get involved in at least one club or activity uh, during the year. This is our um, timetable that we offered um, during the spring term this year. And as you can see, there are a massive amount of different clubs and activities that are run by staff um, that are extracurricular. Everything from subject based to sport based to chess clubs, all sorts of things, drama activities, different things that are run by staff for you to get involved in. Now, this next question is one of the most important ones we've been asked in the sense that things have changed. It says, do we have a locker? And in previous years, we would have said yes to that, but all lockers have now been removed from the school. And so the short answer is no, you will not have a locker. We do know that sometimes you carry quite a lot with you. And to that end, you are um, very welcome to leave bigger items like a PE kit in your tutor room as long as you have arranged it with your tutor. Um, if you're having a food and nutrition lesson on that particular day, when you arrive in school, we would ask you to go straight to the classroom in which you're going to be taught and and pop the food in the fridge because obviously we don't really want you carrying that round with you over the course of the day. OK, our next one says, do we have to wear our blazer all the time, even if it's really hot? Uh, yes, is, is the, the kind of simple answer. Um, you should wear your blazer at all times. However, if you ask permission um, from the classroom teacher to take it off when you enter, then yes, absolutely you can inside the classroom. Also, if you're playing ball games outside, or if um, the head teacher has relaxed the rule for wearing blazers for a given period of time, like in the summer term, then no, you don't have to wear them. But at all other times in the school building and going into and out of lessons, yes, you should wear your blazer. So I know this is a question that um, hangs in people's minds sometimes. How will I know if I'm late? The first thing that I want to point out to you is in the first couple of weeks of school, we are not going to worry about you being late and therefore we don't want you to worry about you being late to a lesson. We know that the school site is bigger probably than your middle schools and you might possibly need to walk quite a distance from one lesson to another. So don't worry about being late to lessons. The cue, though, is if the door is open or closed. You are not late if the door is open and the teacher hasn't fully started the lesson yet. But when they close that door, the lesson has started and then you are officially late. So how will you know the door will be closed? So one of our non-negotiables is demonstrate scholarship. What does that actually mean? Uh, really good question. Scholarship means presenting your work to the highest possible standard. Uh, generally, this means writing in blue or black pen and drawing in pencil. You should include date and title for your work and you should always underline them so it looks neat. Um, your work should be well organised. You make effective, effective use sorry, of the space available um, and 
there may be, you know, well, other subject specific rules like labelling diagrams in science that you'll be made aware of. Basically, it is doing the best that you possibly can every time. OK, so the next question is, can I wear makeup and jewellery in school? We do have a policy for this and let me just um, read out to you what you are allowed to wear. You're allowed to wear a watch. You are allowed to wear a small plain ear stud, one per ear, and you are allowed to wear a simple ring. You are also allowed to wear discreet natural makeup. What this really means is we can't tell you're wearing it. Um, the things that we don't allow, we don't allow earplugs and we don't allow any body or facial piercings aside from those single earrings. So can I eat and drink in the classroom? Um, you can only ever eat in the classroom if there's an agreed medical reason for you to do so. Otherwise, you're not allowed. However, sometimes teachers will give permission for students to eat in their classrooms at lunchtime to give them a dry space to kind of be if it's raining outside and to gather with their friends. You are allowed to drink water in the classroom, but that is not allowed um, during, sorry, um, in IT rooms, science labs and technology rooms, obviously just the equipment that's there. OK, what happens if my drink runs out? That's a good question. Well, hopefully you have brought a water bottle to school with you and you can fill up that water bottle from any of the water machines around school. We do recommend that you drink water during the day um, it keeps you hydrated and that makes learning easier. If you'd rather, you can buy drinks from our vending machines, which are found in the dining room. They're available before school, at break time, at lunch time, and you use your fingerprint to pay. So as long as you've got money on parent pay, um, you can access drinks from the vending machine. I would just like to remind you, though, that we don't allow fizzy drinks or any form of energy drink in school. So when can I chew gum in school? Uh, the simple answer is you can't. Chewing gum is banned um, in school and you should not bring it in, let alone um, be seen chewing it. If you are caught with gum, you will be given a detention and that is due to the amount of work it causes for chewing gum to be, to be removed from tables, chairs, floors, etc. It just makes the site generally look untidy. OK, so the next one, do we have a school diary for me to put my homework in? We used to, but we no longer do. We have no form of paper diary or planner. Um, we do give you a copy of your timetable and a map of the school every year when you come to school in September. And we ask that you carry that in the top pocket of your blazer. Homework, though, and house points when you're awarded them are recorded through ePraise and parents can have access to this as much as students can. There is an app. We ask that you do download it and your login details will be made available to you in September. Um, so another one, what do I call my teachers? Um, you can call your teachers using their, their surname effectively. So uh, Miss Kilmister, Mrs Knight, Mr Nocton, Mrs Budding um, or Sir or Miss, whatever you feel is appropriate at the time, as long as it is a more formal way of speaking to staff. And so finally, what advice would we in the Armstrong House give you to help you settle into school? Well, Miss McKilmister has already referred to this with her winner's slide, but just to reiterate a few things, always try your best. That's all we ever ask of you. Um, get involved. Miss Kilmister said we'd like all of you to join at least one club. That would be fantastic. Try something new. Don't worry about getting things wrong. That is part of learning. We all make mistakes. But if something is playing on your mind or you've done something particularly fabulous that you would like to share um, with any member of staff, the last thing I'd like to say to you is please talk to us. Please tell us what's going on. Please ask the question that you need answered and then make the most of your time at Pershaw High School. There's a lot we have on offer. May, um, access it. So one of the questions we had is why is Armstrong House the best house? Um, I'm incredibly proud to be head of Armstrong. And I'm incredibly proud of all the students that we have in Armstrong House. Yes, we have been 
the winners uh, the last two years, not just of the overall House Cup, but of Sports Day as well. We've done the double, uh, not that I'm competitive in any way at all. Um, but aside from that, I am incredibly proud of every achievement that all of the students um, kind of complete and do within within the house. They truly are amazing and I'm really proud um, to be, say, head of Armstrong. I asked um, who will be your tutors, who will be your tutors um, next year, just to put together a little bit of a video about being proud to be in Armstrong. And I'm just going to slowly, if I can, uh, introduce you to perhaps and just mention names as we go through so you can see some faces. So Mrs Knight with her proud sign. Oh, 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 technical hitch. <laughs> Let's hope it's going to play. I knew there'd be one technical hitch this evening. I think I think we just wanted to look at Mrs Knight with her proud sign. Well, what more could you ask for? <laughs> While well, Mr Hanson, our maestro, just tries to get that working in the background, there's a few questions that have come mm -hmm. through on the chat um, that perhaps we could just go through. So how much homework is there per week or per day? Um, you'll be given much more information about that in September. Um, and, it, and it does vary by, but you'll be given a piece for each subject. Um, and that might be small, that might be a half an hour piece, um, depending on the kind of the different, um, different subjects and what they require of you. Everything I say is put on ePray so that you can keep track of that. Um, next one says, are we allowed to work? Oh, oh, I'm coming back to you. So this that was Mrs. Uh, Roberts and Mrs. Lockley, uh, who co-tutor AAR. Uh, Mrs. Brooks put sent in some flowers, ABR, and Mr. Burroughs, ACB. Mrs. Drew's dog for ADW. Mrs. Lockley's kids. And she's joined by Mrs. Forshaw and her kids. They both co-tutor AFL. Miss Burnham, AJB. Miss King, AJEK. Mrs. Woodrick helps us out and co-tutors a number of groups. Mr. Walden didn't want to be on screen. He just sent a letter T and dive bombed his cushions. He's AKW. Miss Gazard, ALG. Miss Grant, ASG. Miss Comber, who co-tutors ALH. Mr Harding, ANH. Mm. Mr Spice, ANS. Miss Howland, ALH. Mr Thomas, ATH. Mr Trainer uses kids for ATR. And finally, Mrs Hall, who's found in student support in the, in the student hub. So hopefully next Wednesday you will know who all your tutors are. You might be able to come back and watch this again and just put a face to a name of um, who your tutor is going to be. Um, I just ask you if you could please just to speak to your parent or carers about a couple of things. The forms in um, document A from the new intake pack, uh, the deadline for those being returned is today. So if you could just give them a little nudge please to send those back in, that would be great. Just so we can get all of your details put onto the system. I'd also just like to remind you about the transition activities that we've got um, on the main web page. And if you go to the website, they are under year seven transition. There's some activities that we've done for the last obviously couple of weeks. There's a map, a guided tour. Um, there's um, a bit about putting together about yourself. And this week's activities are some tasks from English drama, French history and PE um, that we'd like you to bring back in with you in September when you have done. So just a few other questions that we were just going to jump to before the video kindly started playing. Um, so we've got, are we allowed to wear coats? Um, yes, you are allowed to wear coats to and from school and you are allowed to wear coats at break and lunchtime outside of the school buildings. You are absolutely not allowed to wear hoodies, however. Uh, hoodies are banned um, and coats should only be worn outside. 
Um, Mrs Knight, do you want to do the next one? Where can we go during lunch break? Absolutely. So during lunch break, there's a lot of places that you can go. Uh, obviously, you can go into the dining room if you're getting your food from there. The hall is also open for people who bring in a pack lunch, giving them a place to congregate with their friends. You're also allowed in quite a lot of outdoor spaces, um, uh, but there are certain places where you aren't allowed to go and you will be told about that when you arrive in September. The one thing that you're not allowed to do is you cannot go into classrooms without the specific permission of a teacher who is in that classroom with you. So you should never be in a classroom on your own. Can you see what the ones are below, Miss? I can't see. It says, when do we go back to school and how often will we get tested in subjects? OK, so how often, when, when we go back to school, let's go with that one first. As far as we are aware, everybody is returning to school in September and we will obviously issue more details about that over the summer um, and the days that you will be expected in. Um, and we will have a transition day like we normally do, where it's just you in school for that first day so you can kind of find your feet, get used to where things are. Um, and the second one, sorry, Miss, was... How often will we, will we get tested in subjects? OK, um, generally we do a report to your parents three times a year um, and you will be tested prior to that data being put into the system so that staff know exactly where you're up to. There will be smaller kind of um, in, within each department um, tests of knowledge and things throughout that as well, just to kind of make sure you're on track um, and to identify where you might be having some difficulties or where everybody is that we might need to go back over things. The next one, Miss, is can we wear shorts in the summer? Uh, yes, um, is the answer to that, um, as long as they are proper formal school shorts. And then the last one was just clarification over the pack that was due today. OK, so the pack was emailed out um, and has got all of the forms attached um, to it. Um, if you haven't received that email, um, if you'd like to email us on the, the email from um, that you were given at the end of last um, assembly last Wednesday, then that would be great and we can get that out to you. And that, that's all the questions. OK, fabulous. Uh, thank you for oh. attending this evening. Um, yeah, sorry we one, couldn't... Oh, one was popped in, Miss. Sorry to interrupt you. Do we wear uniform on the first day? Uh, yes, absolutely. We can't wait to see you looking really smart in your uniform. Um, and the first day is, is, is a great first day uh, for your parents to see you in your high school uniform, but also for us to see how smartly you are dressed coming into school. OK, uh, thank you for attending. Sorry we couldn't do this in person. We usually do a, an Armstrong assembly at the end of the kind of the transition day where you're in school, but obviously circumstances wouldn't allow us to do that this year. Um, we really can't wait to see you in September. If you do have any other questions, we're going to stay on the system um, just so we can answer those by text message if um, if needs be, or you can email us, as I said. I hope you all stay safe um, and well, and we really, really look forward to welcoming you in September. And um, your tutors are really, really looking forward to, to seeing you on their live kind of catch up in a week or so's time. Thank you very much.